So fisheries for the deep sea really probably only started in the early part of the last century, maybe the middle part of the early last century. What happens is people would take boats and they'd go as far as they'd have to go to catch fish. And in the old days, they wouldn't have to go very far. Now we've heavily fished inshore areas and the deep sea is, which is farther to go to, it's more remote, it's more expensive. You have to go farther to catch fishes. Um, the problem with fishes, every species differs in terms of its life history. By that I mean how fast they grow, how old they get to be, their longevity or lifespan, um, when they first reproduce in life, how much they reproduce, what kind of mortality they have at different ages. And learning that about nearshore fishes has been difficult enough. And we, we started doing that in the 60s and 70s. Now we're starting to do it for deep sea fishes because it turns out we're finding, and we published several review articles on this, that some of the deep sea fishes of the same family or even genus of, of, uh, of fish live longer, grow slower, mature later, and are therefore more vulnerable. But indeed, these deep water fishes tend to be slower growing. They're sluggish. It's cold. There's not a lot of food, high pressures. It's dark. Prey are hard to find. Um, they do what they can to survive. And if all of a sudden they're facing another source of mortality, which is a net being dragged by, um, they're not used to that extra mortality, and their populations will struggle to recover. Well, the main one is the orange ruffy, uh, New Zealand, Australia, where at one time they thought that they lived 20 to 25 years. Now we know they're one of those that lives over a, dec over a century, 125 uh, years for the oldest and largest orange ruffy. Based on your experience, what do you think would be the best management approach for these deep sea fisheries? That's a, that's a loaded issue. Yeah. Inshore, in some cases offshore in shallower water like the, the northwest Atlantic on the east coast of the United States and Canada, <clears throat> they've put in marine protected areas um, to protect cod and haddock and scallop and things like that. Mm -hmm. Off this coast, they've done it mainly in shallow water. State of California is a pioneer in this, and Oregon and Washington and Alaska are following behind, even Mexico, Baja California, they're following behind in this. But it's more and more difficult the deeper you go to set up marine protected areas. But they've done it. The newest Magnuson-Stevens Act says that we have to impose a precautionary principle. Mm -hmm. That means to, to sustain sustainability, whatever that means. And I don't even know if that can be a, uh, enacted or, or enabled. But sustainability would mean you could fish them and they'd still stick around. And all fishery models assume that that, will, that new equilibrium will, will occur. <clears throat> Excuse me, it doesn't always happen. It hasn't always happened. So you start a new fishery. It, it could be anything from clams, scallops, urchins, um, squid. Uh, it could be the pollock, it, and it was the pollock in uh, the Bering Sea in Alaska. It could be um, ice fish or toothfish, like you're talking about in, in Antarctica. And what happens is the fishery just gets started. The fishermen say, I, got, I, I can catch these, I can sell them, I can distribute them, but we really don't know much about them. And so the fisheries people are behind the ball. They, they, they take some time to catch up. They're better and better at it with computers and new techniques and so on. But I would say that the precautionary principle ought to be imposed before you allow a fishery to exponentially increase mm -hmm. in its effort or its catches or both. You need to know something about their basic life histories, mm -hmm. growth rate, age of maturity, age to longevity or, long, or lifespan, uh, something about the reproductive output or fecundity. And then you can at least ballpark say, okay, we've got to be cautious or go for it. In animals that turn over every two or three years that live five, ten years and reproduce in their first year of life are not usually as vulnerable. They can replace themselves faster, if not totally wiped out, than animals that live 60, 80, 90, or 100 years and will take much longer to recover. Mm -hmm. So be precautionary.